Hmm. You know, guys, I don't know what movie we're gonna review next. This could be a quandary, you know. I don't know. I mean, I mean, we got the MacGruber poster up, so we all know the next movie is probably gonna be awesome and action-packed. Hmm. You know, I still don't know. Hey, what's that? Well, what do you know? We're going over G.I. Joe. That's right. G.I. Joe Retaliation, the sequel to G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra, has surfaced. And this time it is more badass than ever. Here's where it is. The storyline, it sort of picks off from where the first one left off. I say sort of because they start off explaining and showing what has happened after the battles the G.I.s have, have won from before. Uh, and, you know, in the first one, you know, the end of the first one. Uh, and then it breaks up into its own story. Uh, it, but in my mind, it kind of stumbles onto an A-Team storyline. If you don't know who the A-Team is, um, it was a very popular show back in the day. Uh, it was enjoyed by millions. Uh, it was basically a group of military officers who were... Uh, who were basically were duped in, uh, by the government and, and giving society and everybody in the government to think that uh, they were wronged and, and then they went off to do their own thing. This basically had that. The, the story, so apparently the story is here is that they get set up by the government and go rogue and it, they use their time wisely to claim their name. It sounds familiar, right? It's the A-Team, like I said before. It actually worked, and I loved it, and I, I loved it before when it was the A-Team, I loved it now, and I'll always love government conspiracy shit like this. But as the story goes on, it, they connect it well, they, they do, it was written well, and it completely takes you into a whole other world of, of the G.I. Joe universe here. Now, I'm not saying it wasn't, now, it, saying it was bad. In fact, it was, a, like I said, it was a great storyline to follow. It was entertaining. What, uh... What you, what you want me to? Uh, it's what you want. Uh, I enjoyed it. It gets people involved. It got me involved to care about the characters and the act and the act and the actions that they that they do. Um, now that said, good good character development here. I somewhat cared about the characters and what happens to them. Like I said before, uh, it does do well. It's actually a really good storyline. It's written well. Like I said, like I said in the beginning, it's written well to almost to a T. Um, there, there obviously could have been better work on here. Um, this brings me to the action part of this film. The, the action here, it was, it was kick-ass. Every fight scene was just as good as the last. The, the only thing I really wish here was the camera. I really wish it wasn't so shaky. I mean, I couldn't make out heads or tails, uh, you know, on the fight scenes. The, the camera would stay on a fight and then quickly find another and show another and then do a whole 360 shot around it. And at some points, at some points, I didn't even know, uh, I, I almost didn't know who was fighting by, by some points. It was actually very confusing when, when they showed up. But the, the action and the athleticism in these, in the actors and the actresses that do them, I actually loved watching it. It was very kick-ass. Snake Eyes, Total badass. Ray Park, I mean, you gotta love Ray Park. Uh, he was completely awesome in this film. Um, there weren't, they, there wasn't, uh, well, like I said, the, the fighting action scenes were awesome, but they were great, they were, and also they were greatly uh, sporadic throughout the film. So, like, you would have a fight, and then you have, you know, another action, you know, like maybe an explosion or maybe a couple dialogue, you know, verses here or there. And then you and then you would go on to another fight, and then you know, it was very spor it was sporadic enough for me to actually care and actually enjoy this film, and actually, it was sporadic enough for actually make me to make me pay attention, and then listen, and then pay attention again. It was very well done that way. Uh, they and of course when you bring badassery scenes, you of course need a badass cast. And boy, did they bring it here. Pun intended there. If you don't get that one, you need to watch WWE. Uh, well, first you have uh, Jonathan Price. He's back as president. Um, Byung Hun Lee, I believe. Uh, that's how it's pronounced. He's back as Storm Shadow as well. Tatum is back. Um, just uh, just be, just don't uh, get too hung up on Tatum being in there in this film. I know they're pushing him in this film because they 
tend to do like the first couple of minutes, like the first, first 30 minutes or so. Um, just, just, I'm warning you, that's all I'm saying. Um, you also have, um, the enchanting, uh, Adrian Pat Padlicky, who, uh, I know her from Supernatural, but you know, also probably know her from other stuff. Um, she actually did the Wonder Woman pilot that never aired. I don't know if you've ever saw it on YouTube or anything else, um, but she, she did that as well. Um, didn't, didn't go to air though, like I said, but, and of course, Ray Park, you can't deny Darth Maul being in this film, I mean, he was, he was in the first one as well, he is awesome as Snake Eyes, I love his athleticism, he, he's a complete professional here, and it was just amazing to see him, and as well, they, they brought in, uh, Ray Stevenson, com awesome guy to have around during the set, uh, and Lee Young, who is in, uh, I think she's new here. I, I really didn't really look her up as much as I did the others. Um, and you have RZA, which for some point was a hilarious cameo for me and my friends when we watched it. It, it was very funny because he plays a blind monk, <laughs> which is just really funny. I, I, I enjoyed having him there. And, and of course, you have John McClane himself, Mr. Bruce Willis. And, of course, the Brahma Bowl, the great one, The Rock. And how can you not you how can you not say yes to this film with that badass of a cast? You can't really. I mean, even the cast was fantastic, the the action was amazing, and it was written well. Like I keep I I know I keep repeating it, and I know I'm repetitive here. It was great to see all these things come together and actually form a great decent film here. I've, I've said it before, and I'll say it again: the casting did not didn't make me want to see this film. Well, okay, I, I lied there for a second. I mean, who? come on, who doesn't love the Brahma Bull? I love The Rock. I've watched him ever since I was a kid. You know, he was he was advertised, he was just as advertised to the T, man. But the thing is, it, it wasn't just the great one who made me sit in those broken, stained seats. Mostly it was because of, of because it's a sequel to uh, an already okay film. I wanted to see how they were going to perceive it. Now, the thing is here, there are, uh, there are, differences here not a not a lot but there are differences like i said they brought in Ray stevenson and a couple other people but they also brought in somebody new to play um uh cobra they didn't and they gave him the uh the old the uh the original mask as well they didn't instead of uh Justin Gurren levitt i guess he didn't have time to do it or something it wasn't his schedule they had somebody new i don't really know uh who though because uh again they really don't show that as well, but he was completely. They you didn't see his face at all, like not even in the when he was frozen into the. Well, not really frozen. He was in a uh, a glass tubing. You really didn't see his face in that. As well. um, they also they didn't really bring him back, and he, he doesn't get credit for it. I don't know if he if he actually did play it for that part. They had somebody stand in for um. Oh, what's his name? I can't remember his name. Silver guy. I can't remember his name right now. But he was there as well. I, they probably had to stand it. They didn't get Eccleston to play him though, so uh, I really kind of, I kind of was really bummed out about that. But it was an. The thing is, I know the majority of 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 the time sequels aren't usually done well, but this one seemed to do very well. I mean, it got, I think it was 138 million over worldwide. I think it was. It it was. It was an it, would, it was an enjoyable it seemed to work and it was an enjoyable viewing. I, I really enjoyed this film. Uh, I do recommend it for all ages. And if I can find them, oh they're over there. I had them on before. Uh, the GI Joe Retaliation glasses. Make sure you get those at a, at a theater near you because um, it's a really good collection item. Um, now for the fun part. If you like my antics, I mean, come on, who doesn't? And if you enjoy my reviews, share them. Give them a thumbs up right here on the panel. Um, if you really like them, please subscribe to my channel. And I'll give you this. Um, <laughs> please do. Because, uh, you know, I'm just that awesome. And let me give, the, give you the smolder here. Um, also, the next film to be Gare Baird, um, we don't know yet. I, like I said in the, uh, in the Spring Breakers review before this, I do have um, I do have a couple film catch upings uh, to do, but my schedule's a bit tight, so uh, it just means all it just means you just have to stay tuned. So stay tuned, guys.